Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about how society grooms women into accepting and tolerating abuse on all levels. Whether it's psychological abuse by the fashion and beauty industry or emotional and physical abuse in a relationship, we're talking about it because enough is enough. And just as a disclaimer, before I start this video, I do want to say that women are autonomous beings and can make their own choices. Even though we're at the mercy of the patriarchy and the society we live in, women are multifaceted, smart, and are extremely capable human beings. And it's important to take this into account because I'm not here to bash women who just want to stay home with the kids or who want to wear makeup, as long as they're making that choice consciously for themselves. However, it's kind of impossible to measure how much society impacts our decision making. But I will not deny that there are women who just want to stay home with the kids and that's fine. The problem starts when women aren't given the freedom of choice to either stay home with the kids or pursue their own personal or professional interests. The problem starts when women aren't given the choice to not wear makeup or to not get plastic surgery in order to get a job because we all know more attractive people get preferential treatment. And lastly, the problem starts when women have no choice but to get into and stay in an abusive relationship in order to support themselves financially. So part one, grooming. So how does this cycle start? How do women end up in these extremely compromising positions where they have to give up their autonomy in order to perform stereotypical femininity in order to survive in this capitalist hellscape? Well, it starts at birth. Girls are given cleaning supplies as toys. They're given kitchen sets to play in, baby dolls to take care of. They're told to close their legs and be ashamed of their bodies because they're distracting the boys. They're told that it's only natural for boys to mature slower than girls, so they better date older boys instead. They're told to stay skinny, marry rich, because the only reason to go to college is to get an MRS degree. And they're told all of these things not only by family members, but by society. Girls are given boy bands, makeup, clothes, and reality TV celebrities and told these are your interests now. And some girls genuinely like those things and that's fine, but these are really the only acceptable interests for girls to have. But a girl's main interest needs to be men. Girls are supposed to be interested in boys at a very young age and this not only erases lesbianism and bisexualism but this interest in boys and men isn't necessarily a, a romantic one. And this is supposed to teach girls to put boys needs ahead of their own and to look up to men. And part of that is exploiting a girl's need which society has imbued her with um, to be partnered and to be picked. So not only do you have your family telling you you need to find a man, but you have the larger society telling you that once you do find the love of your life, you will be complete and you will finally be valid. And because girls grow up craving the attention and validation from boys, whether it be a school crush or an authority figure, they will do whatever it takes to be accepted by them. A lot of men learn to respect women as they get older, but a lot of other men use this knowledge to their advantage in order to abuse women. Because they know girls are willing to bend over backwards to cater to their needs. And girls see what boys want at a very young age. Considering entertainment for boys is not only for boys, but also for girls, whereas the reverse is not true. So girls see what men want through TV shows, magazines, video games, movies, you name it. So because of this, you have girls as young as 12 years old wanting to shop at Victoria's Secret, buying dick lollipops, you name it, and parents letting them do it. You even have parents digitally exploiting their daughters, but we're not going to talk about that today. And yes, these are examples from my actual days in middle school. I could not make this shit up. You have girls with probably very deep psychological issues in front of the class trying to arouse the male teacher and the teacher letting her. And this is not like an empowering moment. You know, this is sick and it needs to be addressed. 
Nowadays, 15-year-old girls look like they're pushing 30. And I wonder a lot of things. I wonder, one, who is letting slash forcing them do this? Two, they're really good with makeup, good for them. And three, why can't kids just be kids? Why do we shame girls for both looking too old for their age, but also too young for their age? Women are constantly navigating this cesspool of contradictions. They need to like fast food, but not be fat. They need to like sports, but not too much. They need to be a slut and a virgin. It's ridiculous. But from a very young age, like middle school age, maybe even elementary school age, girls are already working to please the patriarchy. And it's terrible. I want to give these girls on TikTok who look like they're pushing 30 the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, they're just exploring their style and makeup and whatever. But in reality, these girls are just embodying the singular Instagrammable beauty standard. And honestly, the least empowering thing is a thin, white, stereotypical, beautiful girl on TikTok. And yeah, the girls' managers and parents probably know they're going to get a lot of money from this and a lot of followers and influence, and they probably think it's harmless, but I don't. I personally worry about all of the elementary age and middle school girls who are looking at these high school girls thinking that looking like that is normal and amazing and perfect. And I worry about their self-esteem and that's not okay. And I put the blame on who's ever managing these kids' accounts, the accounts with more than 20 million followers and the kids like only 15. I put the blame on whatever adult or adults are in charge. All right, so part two, the consequences. So what are the consequences of grooming? Well, besides low self-esteem, eating disorders, bullying by girls and boys for not fitting into the patriarchal ideal, it's getting into abusive relationships. By the time a girl graduates high school, she's probably been in an abusive relationship. Just go on YouTube and watch all of the videos that have been made in recent years by women talking about a boy who abused them in high school. And it's not always physical. A lot of it is psychological, which is just as damning. It takes a long time for a victim of abuse to come to terms with the trauma they've experienced and to really analyze it. So most of these girls are coming out of high school filled with trauma and just shrug it off and continue to date men who prey on them. Of course, as girls get older and become women either in college, trade school, or part-time jobs, we start to see through the farce of marriage, dating, etc. However, just because we know marriage in a financially unbalanced relationship is basically prostitution, doesn't mean we can get out of this social contract. And side note, this is not to shame sex workers, it's mainly to shame the farce that is marriage, and to highlight hypocrisy in our society. Women who end up making not as much as their partner financially become dependent on their partner to support them, and that's extremely shitty because they've basically just traded hands from their family to this guy. They've accumulated nothing. And because women are financially dependent on men, that means that they have to put up with all their guy's shit. Not only his emotional baggage, but also his mind games, his anger, his rage, abuse essentially. Because he knows she can't leave and that's fucking scary. It all starts out so innocently. A little girl playing in a toy kitchen. But that soon turns into a grown woman cooking dinner for her husband who comes home from work too tired to do the dishes, but not too tired to tell her that she's a shitty wife. And not only are women told to tolerate and accept this kind of abuse, they're dissuaded from pursuing their own interests because it's stereotypically said that women gravitate more towards the humanities and those aren't real fields. And unfortunately, jobs in the humanities and domestic slash social work um, do not make a lot of money. And whether women are pushed into these fields purposefully or not, um, we can talk about that later, but they make less money and that's pretty sad. And they're dissuaded from these interests not only because they don't make that much money and because they could potentially get more money by marrying up, but also by the promise of reality celebrity fame. Starting with Playmate of the Month, 
women were told to give up their professional interests and instead enter the lottery that was Playmate of the Month in order to be part of a man's harem and maybe potentially get famous. And today, girls around the world are trying to get famous on TikTok. And I honestly don't think that we should blame the girls or the women who enter these kind of reality TV celebrity contests or whatever because the payoff is pretty big if they actually do get famous. But the whole point of this is that it's a lottery system and the lottery is rigged. So therefore, reality celebrity fame is also rigged. We have to blame the larger systems at play here that make people want to give up their um, interests or their, you know, whatever they're pursuing professionally in order to just enter the lottery and try to get famous. Yes, the payoff is really big, but it's the same as entering the lottery. You're probably not going to be famous unless you have connections, family in the industry. However, that's not to say that TikTok can't be empowering for some people, especially for minority communities. And it's fun for them, you know, and I don't want to take that away. But I do want to blame, of course, the adults who are taking advantage of young kids um, not to not only get money, but also like to influence the larger society. And I think it's also important to point out that men are not told to give up their professional interests to become models. So the conclusion. So as someone who was in an abusive relationship in high school and knew the warning signs but put up with it anyway because my self-esteem was so low that I was willing to be treated like shit just to be partnered and to be picked, um, I know how hard it is as a young girl growing up in this capitalist, patriarchal hellscape. Nowadays, things are a little better, at least we're talking about this kind of stuff now, and women empowerment is like cool, um, but the patriarchy runs deep. There are still 15-year-old girls out there who think dating an 18-year-old is not a big deal and cool. And that's because we teach girls that older guys are more mature than guys their age, when in reality, Older men are just more knowledgeable on how to be predators and how to control women. I know moms who tell their daughters to become models. I know women who are stuck in abusive relationships because they need the money. It's a really shitty and compromising position to be in, but that's the way the patriarchy wants it to be. And nowadays with pop feminism, which doesn't actually address the, system, the systemic oppression that women have faced around the world, a lot of people think that sexism is solved. You can twist anything and say that it's empowering now. Makeup is empowering now. And as long as you acknowledge that you're dressing for a man, you can't be oppressed. Acknowledging the patriarchy isn't the same thing as actively fighting against it. Yes, women can dress for other women, but most clothes sold to women work solely to objectify them. Yeah, we can wear whatever we want, but what do we mean by whatever we want? If we're just buying our clothes at department stores or online or wherever, all of these clothes are predetermined. You know, how much choice do we really have? And that's not to say that you can't feel empowered in revealing clothing, but I wonder what life would be like if we didn't define what's empowering for women based on what men think is attractive. And though pop feminism um, is a trash fire, essentially, there, there has been some good to come out of it, actually. Um, Taylor Swift, I know this is a Taylor Swift plug, I'm sorry if you have decisive feelings about her. But in 2010 and 2011, before the pop feminism movie, movement really took off, she wrote Dear John and 15, which talk about being a teenager in an abusive relationship in high school which not a lot of people want to talk about or even admit that teens can be abusers and predators. So I think that's cool. Um, so that's it. I don't really have such a grand conclusion to this video, but I do think it's dangerous that we're, that, that I do think it's dangerous that pop feminism lets us twist things into being empowering um, when they're really not. And I think that's dangerous. Um, I think that teens on TikTok, um, their, their team behind them and who is ever exploiting them is dangerous. 
And I think that the internet, rather than diversifying what we think is beautiful, has really just created one standard of beauty. And we can see that now with numbers, likes, follows, etc. Um, what we think is beautiful, what we think is valuable. And I honestly find that very disturbing. I think that if I was in high school now, I'd be even more of a loser than I was back in like 2010 because the beauty standards have changed so much and I just probably would not be into any of that. So yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys learned something and liked this video. Sorry that at the end it got kind of rambly, but I hope my ideas came through. So I make, I mean, I post new videos every Friday. Subscribe if you want to see them. Like this video and comment if you have thoughts. Share this video with someone. Become a patron. Thank you so much to the patron that I already have. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.